basically, you know, grandfather was, uh, and grandmother, we always tell about grandfather, uh, came here on, in, uh, over 129 years ago. And uh, they were, uh, uh, wanted to, you know, go in the wine business. They looked at, this, the area looks similar to the Graves area in France. And so uh, anyway, this is, so you can see all this rock around here. And he said, when you have nothing else to do, he told the five boys, go out and pick up rocks. Well, as you can see, we're building a beautiful new gate here today, you know, and I'm not saying it's the rocks that, uh, that we picked up, but uh, anyway, we, uh, we, we are continually doing that. It's about, a, it's an alluvial gravel bed, and it goes right down toward downtown Livermore, which is really great. And speaking about downtown Livermore, we've been so happy about the fact of what you've done and, and everyone else in town and, and improving First Street so much. You know, it's, it's the classiest uh, street I've seen in the, in the country. And uh, I remember, you know, we needed a lot of help there years ago, but with all your help and the rest of the area, because that really fits into Kincannon, because you know our land is quite valuable, but we're, we've been placed in the conservancy, so because it goes right to the civic center, and so consequently we'll always grow one thing, grapes, that's all we can grow. Conservancy uh, to us is about preserving a way of life. It's about preserving our family, our heritage, our old winemaking techniques, but most importantly our land. We saw a very disturbing trend coming on several years ago. Three million acres of prime farmland in the United States were lost to urban development every year. And at first I thought, well, that's a big number. I can't quite get my head around that. But I did the math. That's 342 acres an hour. Now that hit me. So we took all of our land and we put it in a permanent land trust, the Tri-Valley Conservancy Program. So to help bring awareness to that, we launched a couple years ago a line of wines called Conservancy. Well, as Irish luck would have it, my uh, great-grandfather was born on St. Patrick's Day on the Aran Islands. And in 1865, at the age of 18, James Kincannon left uh, the rocky coast in search of new opportunity. He established the first Irish-American winery in the United States. Well, the Irish heritage is always something that, that he instilled in his children and that's been passed down on to uh, the generations to follow. The Kincannon name means wisdom without compromise in Gaelic, and it doesn't mean that you know everything, it just means you don't compromise on what's important to you. So now, 150 years later, we've come back to Ireland. We're partnering with another company that holds the same values and philosophies that we do, and that's with Cooley. We were very excited when uh, we were asked to develop a whiskey for Concanon because this was something we really hadn't done much of before. Well, jointly, Concanon and Cooley are two very innovative companies, and a perfect example is the Concanon Irish whiskey that we're collaborating with them on. The whiskey is being aged for four years. And it was suggested that we would use some of the casks from the Concanon winery, in particular the Petite Syrah cask. So my family came to the Livermore Valley in 1883. Actually, my great-grandfather and his new bride, Barbara Troutwine. My great-grandfather and great-grandmother had seven children, three boys and four girls. Two of the sons went into the business in 1918, but we're really excited because before Herman and Ernest actually took over the family winery in those years. My grandfather had gone to the University of California at Davis and was in the first graduating class there in 1912. He uh, had a professor whose name was Professor Bonet and uh, the professor said to him one day after class, Ernest, I've been to your beautiful vineyards in the Livermore Valley. I know you have great soils and great climates. They're very reminiscent to me of those in France where we grow the great white grape uh, bur of Burgundy. And, and my grandfather said, yes. <laughs> and so basically, uh, the professor was asking him if he would like to get some Chardonnay grapes or grape cuttings and plant them in our Livermore Valley vineyards. And so as the small town of Livermore was growing up, we were beginning to plant our first Chardonnay. And so this year in, in 2012, 100 years later, we're now celebrating the 100th anniversary of Chardonnay. So a lot of the Chardonnay from California is related to the original clones brought in to uh, the Livermore Valley by my grandfather, Ernest Wente. Uh, 
those today it said that about 75 to 80 percent of all Chardonnay vineyards planted throughout California are planted to the Winty clone. The wonderful thing about the Winty clone is the fact that uh, it produces great wines and it's about the grape itself and and why it was selected is uh, it is fairly good in terms of the amount of crop that it bears but most importantly it's about the skin to um, juice contact or, or ratio and so that it has um, a berry size that really delivers great flavors uh, given the amount of meat to the, the skin itself.